This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Certainly glad to have all of you with us this morning. May the Lord bless our worship time together. If you're visiting with us, we pray that you enjoy your worship. You come back again real soon. Hear the good news of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to those online with us this morning. And also we'll take a moment to, to wave to one another. There's coming a day when we'll be able to shake hands again. I know it. I know it. Be able to go across the pews. Over. We're just going to do it for five or ten minutes when that time happens, I think. Uh, what a joy it is to be here today. We're going to be continuing to celebrate as we're still in the season of Epiphany. In a couple of weeks, we'll be celebrating Transfiguration and moving into Lent. Before we do that, though, we need to sing our opening hymn. It's hymn number 704, Renew Me, O Eternal Light. You'll find the hymnal also on the screens behind me. Lord, blessings on your worship this morning. Service setting four begins on page 203 in the front section of your hymn. It will also be on the screens for you as well. Please stand as you are able as we continue with the invocation and our opening sentences. As always, we begin our worship time together in the name of Almighty God, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who if you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are here. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness, and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking His grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your Spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue with the intro as sung responsibly. I will praise you with an upright heart when I learn your just and righteous decrees. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek with him with their whole heart. Thank you. 
graciously hear the prayers of your people, that we who justly suffer the consequence of our sin may be mercifully delivered by your goodness to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we continue with the readings for this day. The Old Testament reading for this Sunday is found in the book of Jeremiah, the 17th chapter. Thus says the Lord, cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a shrub in the desert and shall not see any good come. He shall dwell in the parched places of the wilderness in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. He is like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream and does not fear when heat comes, for its leaves remain green, and is not anxious in the year of drought, for it does not cease to bear fruit. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle for this Sunday is found in the first book of Corinthians, 
chapter 15. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain, and your faith is in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testified about God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you're still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as we sing the Alleluia and verse. chapter. Jesus came down with them and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon, who came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all the crowd sought to touch him, for power came out from him and healed them all. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you shall be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, and revile you, and spurn your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day, and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven, for so their fathers did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you shall be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. Woe to you when all people speak well of you, for so their fathers did to the false prophets. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord. Please be seated as we sing our hymn of the day, hymn 982, Blessed Are They.
Grace and mercy and peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Word of God, which is the basis for our meditation this morning, is that gospel lesson I read just a moment ago. My friends in Christ, once upon a time, there was a man who, when he walked into church on Sunday mornings, like all of you did today, he was asked always how he was doing. And he would respond with a single word. He would simply say, blessed. Every week, he said the same thing. How many of us would give that response today? Maybe all of us. I mean, blessed is one of those pretty churchy things to say, right? But if you actually give it some thought, to what would you look to see if you were blessed? Take a quick inventory of what's going on in your life. Well, my health is pretty good. I know it certainly could be a lot worse. But I do have a roof over my head, I've got food in the refrigerator, I have good friends, you know, I am pretty blessed. But what if all those things were taken away? Would you still consider yourself blessed? This morning Jesus teaches us where to find his blessing. And like many of his teachings, he turns things upside down. While the world looks to us to, to look in one direction to find the Lord's blessing, the Lord completely turns us around and points us in the opposite direction. So this morning, we're going to look at the words of Jesus in our text that are traditionally called the Beatitudes, also found in the Gospel of Matthew, and see the unusual places that the Lord promises his blessing. Now, the first thing we need to look at, though, is Jesus' audience. The Gospel of Luke tells us, that there was a large crowd of his disciples there, and a great number of people all over from Judea, Jerusalem, from the coastal region of Tyre and Sidon, who had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. So Jesus, we are told, is preaching to a large and rather diverse crowd of believers and non-believers. Some of them were followers of his, and some of them, quite honestly, were probably more interested in seeing this man, of whom they had heard a great deal, but still didn't follow him or believe in him. But when it came to the Beatitudes, that section of our gospel reading, the audience is specifically his disciples. You see, these words aren't directions on how to become a Christian. These words of Jesus are there, are here for us to know how we live as ready, or we are already Christians. As these believers live their Christian lives of thanks to their Savior, Jesus promised them promised them his blessing in some pretty interesting and strange situations in their lives. And it may seem a little strange when you consider where it is that Jesus says you will find blessing. If you ask someone how their week was, and they respond with, well, let's see, I'm poor, I'm hungry, sad, hated, excluded, insulted, and rejected. You probably wouldn't respond with, ah, it's great to hear. <laughs> and yet that's where Jesus tells us that we find blessing. You see, We need to remember that Jesus is talking about spiritual things here. Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. You see, by nature, we are poor. We don't possess anything that can pay the price for our salvation. For the freedom, for get, to get freedom from sin's condemnation. We are spiritually bankrupt beggars. Our good works and our niceness, our patience and all the good we do for others will never be enough to reach the, the standard of perfection that God requires to be a part of his kingdom. You see, it's only when we recognize our spiritual poverty that we can truly appreciate the riches of God's grace and forgiveness. It's when you realize that you can't contribute even an ounce towards your salvation, that you are blessed with the confidence and the peace of knowing that Jesus has fully paid for your salvation. How blessed are we poor sinners as we depend completely on the riches of Christ's love and forgiveness. Blessed are you who hunger now, he says, for you will be satisfied. Now, this is closely connected to the previous thought with a little bit of a different emphasis. 
Physically speaking, it's the feeling of hunger that drives us to receive the nourishment that our bodies need to go on doing the things we do, right? Well, spiritual hunger is a good thing for us as believers. It's the spiritual hunger that comes from longing to hear about Christ's forgiveness. Because our sins, they constantly make us aware that we are in desperate need of that forgiveness. That, that spiritual hunger comes from, from seeing our weaknesses. To where we have fallen into the devil's lines. And given in to the sinful world around us. We hunger to, to hear that Christ forgives us. That Christ loves us. And, and only in Christ can that hunger be truly met. How blessed. And then Jesus says, blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. You will rejoice. Now this is an interesting one, because the world around us says we should never feel bad about anything. In fact, the only thing we're told to feel bad about is feeling bad. But Jesus says that there is a blessing for those who weep. Because you see, sadness is the result of recognizing that something is broken. A relationship. Trust. Your body. Your life. A friendship. As a believer, when you see that you have sinned, you weep and you're sad because you realize that you've broken something that God gave to you. And it's not that God wants you to stay miserable, not at all. In fact, the Apostle Paul wrote these words to the Christians in Corinth. He said, godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret. The sadness over our sin leads us to repentance. And repentance always leads us to Christ. To hear those words that he longs for us to hear. You are forgiven you are loved, you are mine. And how can that not bring a smile to your face and joy to your heart? How blessed are those who weep with a repentant heart. Now Jesus concludes his blessings by saying, blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day, he says, leap for joy, because great is your reward in heaven, for that is how their ancestors treated the prophets. Now there's a little phrase that's important to keep in mind when you read this verse. And this is the phrase. He says, because of the Son of Man. Now, obviously, as a Christian, you, feel, you don't go around searching for suffering. You aren't looking for insults that you can, so that then you can claim the Lord's blessings. Not at all. The difficulties Jesus is talking about are those that, that come as a direct result of actively living your Christian life. It's kind of like the student who is bullied because he won't participate in underage drinking. Or the, or the woman who is bashed on Facebook because she believes that life begins at conception. Where is the blessing in these things? It always goes back to remembering the reason that you are experiencing that rejection and that ridicule. It's because you are a follower of Jesus the Christ. These difficulties are evidence of your relationship with him. And your relationship with Christ brings you blessings that, that far outweigh these temporary difficulties in this life. Blessings that, that go on into eternity. And then Jesus goes about making a list of woes or warnings. A list that really parallels his list of blessings. And these are things that, that many people would, would probably use to determine how blessed they are. You know, things like wealth and extravagance and happiness and popularity. And of course, there's nothing wrong with any of those things. God wants us to enjoy the material and the physical things that he has given to us. But Jesus makes it repeatedly clear that we need to watch out and not be deceived by those things. While those things can certainly bring temporary pleasure and popularity, if you depend on them, you'll be left lacking the riches won for you in Christ. 
my friends in Christ, remember that Jesus was talking to his disciples, people just like you and me. He knows the temptations that are, that are out there for us who follow him. How easily we can be led astray, looking into the wrong places for evidence of his blessing. The purpose for Jesus' promises, the purpose for these warnings, is always to lead us back to the one place where real and lasting blessing comes. The cross of Jesus Christ. The richness of his love. The satisfaction of his forgiveness and the confidence of life eternal. It is there, in Christ alone, that you can always say, I am blessed. In his name, amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus now and always. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, I invite you to stand with me as you are able as we proclaim our Christian faith this morning using the words of the Nicene Creed. We share our faith together. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, the very God of the very God, begotten and not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us stands before our salvation, came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for our son of God. He suffered and was buried, and on the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and the descent into heaven, and the sits at the right hand. Heavenly Father, your kingdom has been made manifest in the preaching and in the miracles of Jesus Christ. Gather together your great multitude from every nation, that many may know wisdom come in our flesh. And grant, O Lord, that your people may always hold fast to your word that has been preached to them and not believe it in vain. Lord, in your mercy, preserve the family and all godly Christian homes. Give parents diligence and persistence in their duties to teach the faith in word and example. Keep all children in the promise you made to them in their baptism. Let the patience, kindness, and endurance of Christian love have no end among us. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Well, God, do not let our rewards and blessings consist in the treasures and goods of this world, but give us joy in every sorrow, knowing that if we have you, we lack nothing and will receive an eternal reward in Christ that cannot fail. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. we ask, O oh Lord, that you would be near those who are troubled by any unclean spirit, memory, or thought, and to the sick and all who need your healing. Send forth your power in the name of Christ Jesus, that they would hear your word and be cured. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. on this day, O oh Lord, we come before you on behalf of our sister Eleanor Silvernuckle, whose sister passed away on Friday. We ask you to be with Eleanor and her family. Comfort them, Almighty God, with the, your presence and the power of your spirit, reminding them of all who die in the faith, live with you in eternity. Lord, in your mercy. We ask your blessing upon our congregation, Almighty God, as we continue through the call process. We pray that you would bless us Guide your Holy, your Holy Spirit would guide those involved in our congregation in this process. We also ask you to be with our voters' assembly to meet here after the service today. That we move forward, Lord, by your grace to continue to do the work you've called us to do in this place. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. 
And now, Lord, we entrust all these petitions to your care, confident in your great mercy for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is worshipped together with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue our service with the service of the sacred reminder that we do not collect the offering in the pew. The offering plate is available for you as you leave this morning. Also a reminder, please sign those little white cards you find in the pew racks in front of you. We'd love to know who's been worshiping with us on this beautiful day. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give you thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. And above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us, and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. As the glory of your presence once filled your ancient temple, so in the incarnation of your Son, Jesus Christ, you manifested the fullness of your glory in human flesh. And so we give you thanks that in his most holy supper, you reveal your glory to us. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood so that we may one day behold your glory face to face. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on that night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you, this do, in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And now the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen.
Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in his peace and joy as you are served to bless him. Amen. I invite you to stand as we lift our voices and singing the new Dominus, O Lord, now let your servant depart in peace. thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now receive the blessing of your Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing as we sing our closing hymn, Alleluia, Alleluia, Hearts to Heaven.
again what a joy it has been to be in worship with you this morning, to sing those hallelujahs. We'll be not singing them here in just a couple of weeks as we get into the season of Lent. So it's nice to sing as many of those as we can over the next couple of weeks. Uh, just a couple of reminders in your bulletin and the, insert, the uh, inside front cover of the Baby Bottle campaign, campaign. Today is the last day that you can contribute to that as they need to have those collected. On the inside back cover, a reminder of the uh, uh, Easter, Easter lilies. <laughs> I just saw that. Easter lilies. We've got to order Easter lilies already. We haven't even gotten to Transfiguration yet. Okay. Uh, we need to order them, but we need to order them early. As you well know, in this day and age, things are hard to get to. So we're going to order those by Sunday, February 27th. All right? And so we make sure we beautify the altar as we prepare for and have to celebrate Jesus' resurrection. Also, just a special reminder, as today we have our Sanctuary Improvement Project, the Voters' Assembly uh, meeting will be held here in the sanctuary, I believe. Is that where we're having it? Anybody that knows that? Okay, we're good. Got a thumbs up back there. All right, two of them, actually. Okay, good. We'll have the, the, the uh, voters' meeting will be in here at around 9 o'clock. At, at what time we got? You got six minutes to get coffee and donuts? <laughs> and uh, come back in here so we get that meeting started as soon as possible, all right? God be with you as you are truly blessed. Sorry, sorry. Are they, are they over? I promise I'm not taking too much of your time. Yeah, um, I've, heard that, I've heard that before. <laughs> Go ahead, Ray. Sorry, much. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Ray. Yes, that's what I like to hear. Hello. Um, just a quick reminder. Uh, I'm sure you probably already noted it. Uh, flyers that are already outside. Uh, just want to call attention. Uh, in about a month's time, our youth here at Mount Allen will be presenting their uh, Logos Sunday presentation. Uh, this year it is uh, modeled after American Idol. It is called American Ideal. And it is a production about humility. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, our youth, our Logos youth, will present this production at the 8 a.m. service, the 10 a.m. 10 30 a.m. service on Sunday the 6th. Uh, so please do mark your calendars with that as we should all be here to certainly support them. However, for those of you who have young ones who want to make this an entire full day, we are partnering with our friends at the Central Midwest Ballet Academy who are presenting a showcase that same day at Black Hawk. Country Club. I'll be there. Uh, the tickets are uh, available online. The flyers are outside. I'm encouraging you to please come and join. There's crafts. Uh, there's going to be uh, arts brunch. Um, also, there's going to be a uh, meet and greet with storybook characters and, of course, ballet. That ballet company will be coming here after Easter to present a spring showcase in the Family Life Center. So this would actually be a fantastic way for us to introduce ourselves to them, um, but also a great, great day to continue the festivities of Logo Sunday. So please do, do, uh, do take a look at the flyers outside, and hope to see you there. Thank you so much. All right, Pastor. Thank you, Ray. Thank you. God bless. <laughs> 